Playing in Melbourne seemingly holds few fears for the New Zealand Warriors, who are only one of two teams that have lowered the Storm's colours at Amy Park in 2011. In fact, it was almost five months to the day that the Kiwi Club surprised the Storm on Anzac Day. And that would have been weighing heavily on Craig Bellamy's mind in the lead-up to the second grand final qualifier. The Melbourne boss received some early assurance that his team was on their game when Gareth Widdop found a charging New Zealand-born back rower. He looks for Widdop, he gets to the Manu, Manu score! Sika Manu scores! Sika Manu with the Northern end has scored for Melbourne. Off the back of a penalty on the late tackle. This match was developing into a carbon copy of that April encounter between the two clubs, with the storm striking inside the first five and the visitors replying on the end of a high kick. Puts the kick over, here's Inu! Came backwards, dived on by Tupo! Try New Zealand! Try the Warriors! Well, it was great! A three-match check and points to the spot. Another bomb drew a blunder from Dalian Player of the Year, Billy Slater. And it was seized upon in the following set when Michael Luck served up a sweet short ball. Michael Luck with the right side play. The Warriors were looking dangerous and confident, with the defence continually being tested. And here's Mateo Maloney and then Mannering. No look, might have gone forward, it did. Simon Mannering's errant pass not only cost his side a scoring opportunity, but offered Slater a shot at redemption. Oh, Slater's sure. got the ball away! And Bo Champion, he's sprinting away! Locks after him, but he beats Lock to the line! That sizzling burst by the ex-South centre was duly converted by Cameron Smith. But after levelling things up, the Storm skipper was pinged for an illegal strip. And with a minute to go before the break, James Maloney pointed to the sticks before anyone could even blink. He strikes it, the touches haven't moved, the flags go up. That penalty goal by the Warriors pivot was all that stood between the combatants after 40 minutes of high-powered football. Kevin Locke was left checking that everything was in the right place, following a bump from Smith that went without penalty. The dashing Warriors custodian might have still been a bit dazed from that when he entertained a low percentage option down the touchline. Ivan Cleary wasn't too thrilled by Locke's flirtation with the chalk. And the tension kept rising as the match matured, with the Aucklanders endeavouring to extend their slender advantage. It's come away from Lock. It went backwards the pass. Maloney rolls it in. Brown has scored. Brown scores for the Warriors. It will go under inspection. Before the men in white could celebrate too much, though, a review of the video detected a tiny fumble by Lock in the lead-up. But after missing out on that one, Lewis Brown bobbed up again to capitalise on Sean Johnson's dazzling footwork. Then gets the pass to Johnson. Johnson's still going. Dummies again, Johnson. Oh, yes. Gets it away to Brown. <laughs> Brown. Brown goes in to score. The margin was six with a couple of minutes still remaining, leaving Maloney to set the result in concrete and sink his former club. Maloney, it looks over. What an upset, what a game and what a night for the New Zealand Warriors. Triumphant by 20 points to 12 to qualify for the club's first grand final since 2002. It's been a dream from the club you know, for a very long time now. and I uh, just cannot believe it, you know, I can't describe it. So it's the much maligned Warriors to meet Manly in this year's Telstra Premiership Decider at ANZ Stadium on Sunday, October 2. A showdown that shapes as a classic. David Rollins, Big Pond Sport.